Okay, my name is Brian Craig. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. You will love this channel. I promise you, all right? We got a lot to cover. And, okay, there we go. All righty, we are back. My name is Brian Craig. This is Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. Now, I was talking about True Social there before the break, and I told you all I do not give financial advice, but you know who does? Jupiter Joe Thomas. He is a retirement expert, he is a financial advisor, and he's offering free phone consultations with anyone in our listening audience. You want to talk to them about annuities, uh, which are absolutely amazing. You know, with your annuities, you're not risking your money, like in the stock market. There are no ups uh, and there are no downs. Your money is safe. And when you're retired, you can earn income, which is absolutely amazing. Now, no matter where you're located, you can take advantage of the no-charge free consultation from Joe Thomas. Give him a call, 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. And if you missed that number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com. Okay, so, you know, many people over the years in Congress, in particular in the House of Representatives, have really done things out of character that are very disappointing over the years. And when that happens you got to ask yourself, why? Why is this congressman, who's one of our leading guys, why is he doing this? And what you find is they're either bribed or blackmailed. Madison Cawthorn talked a lot about this. They tried to bribe him, right? Or blackmail. They, they inv uh, remember he talked about getting invited to that eyes wide shut like party and he turned it away. And this, this has been going on since I've been following this thing. Um, you know, you, and it's, it's awful. It's awful. But, you know, the men in particular that are in the House of Representatives, probably the Senate too, but the House is a little different. These guys, they're, they're not living in their district. They're living in Washington, Virginia, the Washington area. Their, their wives and families are back home in the district. And these guys get wined and dined at parties, and then all kinds of craziness happens. Sometimes they're just on the take like Biden with, with um, donors and the military industrial complex. But they invite them to these sex parties and everything else. And it's, it's all like Jeffrey Epstein. Everything's wired up, right? They got everything on audio and video, and these days it's in 4 and 5K. So they, get, they either bribe you. If you don't take the bribe, they, they, they have someone seduce you and they record it and they, they're going to destroy your marriage, your life, your career, unless you do what it is they tell them. And that's something that we've gotten wind of from time to time. You know, and the Madison Cawthorn is the most recent example of that. But lately, there's been Republicans resigning from Congress in the House of Representatives. Now, Contrary to what people will tell you in the media and the left and the never Trumpers, we did win the midterms. You know, Kevin McCarthy became Speaker of the House and Nancy Pelosi was fired. And now we've got a resignation that's going into effect this month, another Republican. And I, I believe we're going to be at about a one seat majority in the House of Representatives. A one seat majority. Well, to me, a majority is a majority. We still control it, and we should still be able to do whatever it is we want to do, but it doesn't seem to work that way. But we're going to have a one-seat majority. And this latest re resignation is really one of the most troubling because uh, if he would have waited, if he would have resigned a couple weeks earlier instead of waited, there would have been a special election 
it's a Republican seat, and we would have had a two-seat majority, which is too, still too slim in a House of 435 members. So what's going on here? And, and I've, I've thought for months, I've talked about this for months, that it looks like the never-Trumpers, that they're um, very likely going to hand control of the House of Representatives over to the Democrats, and Hakeem Jeffries could become the Speaker of the House before November. And let me tell you, if, if the Democrats take over and they have a one-seat majority, they'll pass everything. They won't care. Oh, well, we need to be bi They won't care about all that bipartisan stuff. They'll pass everything. They'll send it to the Democrats in the Senate. They'll send it to Biden, and boom. And there was talk last week, um, and I did talk about this, that um, the never-Trumpers, the Uniparty, the Republican establishment, the Democrats, are seriously working on giving Democrats control of the House so they can pass legislation to keep Trump off the ballot in November. So yesterday, Matt Gates gave an interview with, uh, yeah, it was Dan Ball, who's very good, on Real America's Voice, and he was talking about just this thing. And I want to play some of this for you. And uh, it's just awful. Listen. On the Ken Bucks. And these folks that are retiring early and screwing over the country. I was going to say party, screwing over we the people. So how are we going to, one, hold on to the majority through next January, because now we're down to one, and let's talk about how we get out and get more of those America First folks elected. Well, first things first, preserving this majority when you had people like Kevin McCarthy and Ken Buck and Mike Gallagher walk off the job. Three people walk off the job in a four-seat majority. It's tough. Now, absolutely. them off, Matt. Well, that's, that's the concern we have with anyone that is leaving at this time. Let me be clear. There is an organized effort by the political left right now to buy people off to quit and then also to try to compromise people. Now, compromise means blackmail. Set them up with a hooker or something like this, and uh, boom, they're done. No of circumstances right now where people are being told you, you should quit or else some mm. information might come out. We might lie about you and say things that are false. They're actually trying to steal the majority that the people gave to the Republican Party and convert it to the Democratic Party, and they should not have enablers and co-conspirators in our movement willing to facilitate that. Uh, I think, you know, that we've got to be uh, real resilient about that, and we should judge harshly those who leave service to go get some high-paying job, if that, in fact, turns out to be the case. We all knew what these jobs were. Okay, so these high-paying jobs, <laughs> uh, that's part of the bribe, right? That's, that could be a bribe. You get this high-paying job if you resign. Believe me, the Uniparty is working hard on this, and Matt Gates is confirming what I've been talking about the last few months, and it's frightening. And you, you know someone's compromised when they start acting out of character, like our new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. There's some, they got something on this guy. What, and, you know, it doesn't have to be on you. They can blackmail you with something that's in a member of your extended family. Your mom, your dad, your uncle, your brother. Right? They can get them jammed up in something. And then all of a sudden, you're doing their bidding. There's something up with this guy, Matt, uh, Mike Johnson. He said yesterday they're going to talk about Ukraine funding. There's no discussion. There should be no Ukraine funding. So why is he? Why is Mike Johnson? Why is Mike Johnson talking to the Democrats about Ukraine funding? Because he's compromised somehow. Yeah, you know. Um, that's, that's, that's the way it is. And it's, it's probably always been that way. We just are more aware of it now because Matt Gates has an alternative form to go and talk about these things to. But even Matt Gates isn't giving names. And you know he knows specifics about who is compromised in, in, in the Republican caucus in, in the House of Representatives. So... While they may always do this, it's a little more effective because we have such a slim majority. And, you know, money and sex are the root of almost every evil. 
that takes place. You know, I watch a lot of true crime. Most every, every murder is over money or sex or both. And that's what Washington is, is filled with. It's filled with incredibly wealthy international corporations and people that have unlimited financial resources to, you know, and it, they may not be offering you a job. They may offer your kid a job. Your kid's graduated college. They may get some big job at some corporation somewhere, a job that they may not even have to show up to. All right. And that's, that's what happens. And when these guys are away from their families and away from their wives in Washington, D.C., and they seduce them. And when I say they seduce them with prostitutes, these aren't, the, you know, your normal prostitutes they're talking about. I mean, these are the, the top of the line global prostitutes they have, you know, like movie star level prostitutes. And they seduce these guys. And they got everything on film. They got everything recorded with high definition and incredible audio. That guy's done forever. There's so much money on the line with everything that goes on in Washington. And this is how business is done. Now, the way we can overcome it is by having a super majority. When, when you have a slim majority of like half a dozen or less, that's what happens. Now, they didn't have to do this to everyone. They got Santos out, which was outrageous. George Santos should still be there. Kevin McCarthy just resigned on his own and gave another seat. So some of them are, are part of it and do this on their own. But others, they do things that are out of character. Like Buck leaving two weeks after a call for a special election would have been made. That's insanity. It's crazy. If you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our break for the bottom of the hour. We've got a lot to cover today. I'm Brian. Our number is toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great. That's the way it is, guys. It's the way it is. That's the way it is, guys. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm glad that he um, talked about that because he, he confirms what we have suspected, right? I mean, he just confirmed what we knew. By the way, those of you that are Patreon supporters, I uploaded a video right before I went live today for Patreon supporters. So if you want to become a Patreon supporter, I, there is a link uh, in the description of every video. You just click that link, it'll tell you how to become one. All right, we'll be back shortly, guys. Welcome. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll get to some calls when we get back, but that's what they're doing. I mean, they very likely 
Their plan is to give the Democrats control of the House before November. They're never going to stop trying to stop Trump, ever, for the rest of his life. They're always going to be after him. I would not be surprised, Annette. I would not be surprised. Well, Benny Johnson is in with Vivek. There's no doubt about that. Now, back to the Steve King. All right, we're back. Calls on hold, stand by. Our number one, 888 465 2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Lewis. I'm calling from Shreveport, Louisiana. All right, Lewis, what's up? Well, you know, we, we've talked before, and I know you have suspicions of Mike Johnson, the speaker, and being a, a resident here in his district, I can just tell you, and I, I respect what you say, I'm a long-time listener, but you've got it wrong about Mike Johnson. He's not a guy that's going to flip on conservatives. He is loyal to the principles that made this country great. And although it may look like he may be compromised, I'm just telling you, as someone who has known him for a very long time, he's not going to leave us. Well, it's not, well, it's a couple things here. It's not me that's, that's saying this. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. 
Marjorie Taylor Greene, who I, I trust uh, very much so, and she's on the inside, she wants him out. Yeah, no, I understand. And he explained... So, so what, who, knows more, who knows more about what's going on inside the House of Representatives, you or Marjorie Taylor Greene? Well, I, but she's one person out of 435 minutes. Yeah, but she's, she's one of uh, maybe two. I trust her and Matt Gates in Congress. Like, not, not another name comes up that I totally, 100% trust more than those two. But I do consider Mike's argument, excuse me, Speaker Johnson's argument. Here. Speaker Johnson. What, what's his argument? What's his argument? The argument that he's, he's made with respect to keeping the government open. Why? Because it's a trap that the Democrats will set. No. Make it seem as if Republicans cannot govern. Well, first off, first off, we're not governing. They are because they have the White House, okay? You, the, he, the government should be shut down until this lawfare stops. The, you know, the, the most powerful um, body in, in the federal government is the House of Representatives because the House of Representatives controls federal spending, and they're not using their powers, okay? They should have the government shut down until this, this illegal lawfare against President Trump ends from the Justice Department. They should have the government shut down until this uh, illegal uh, war uh, with uh, Ukraine and Russia is no longer supported. Uh, Mike Johnson should shut down the government until Biden stops funding the Palestinian terrorist in Gaza. You know, what's the point of being in charge if you don't use the power and authority that you have? All they do is make deals. And that's certainly some very good points, but let's remember, Mike Johnson is not acting unilaterally. I, I have no doubt that he is working with President Trump, communicating with President Trump. No, I don't, not on this. I, I, I'll tell you, no, no, Marjor, Marjorie, 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 Marjorie Taylor Greene's in direct contact with Trump constantly, and she wants Johnson out, so I have to assume that's where Trump is. He's just not being the front man on it because it's an election year. He doesn't want to get involved in that, which I understand. He's got Marjorie Taylor Greene to do it. But, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you uh, he is he's working not with President Trump. He's working with Biden and the Democrats, Mike Johnson. I don't care how much how long you've known him and how much you like him. Uh, he's working with the Democrats. When the government is shut down, uh, it affects very little. Uh, all, everything that's important and necessary uh, continues. When the government gets shut down, what what really changes? It shuts down every Friday at five in the afternoon. It shuts it it shuts down every every holiday. And what changes other than you don't get the mail that day? The mail would even continue during a government shutdown. Yeah, no, there's uh, exactly, as well as benefits for our veterans and, and our... Social Security, Medicare. See, the thing is, if the government was... Sh one of the things that Washington fears most about government shutdown is that if a government is shut down, uh, after a certain period of time, people will realize, well, wait a minute, I don't even notice. Maybe we have too much government. It's been shut down for six months, nothing's changed. In fact, there was a government shutdown when Obama was president, and people weren't noticing it. The government shut down for a while. So, pres uh, so Obama had them shut down um, the open air memorials in Washington, D.C. He had them put a blockade up on the road in front of Mount Rushmore so you couldn't drive by Mount Rushmore. So he could make people feel the pain of a government shutdown because people were starting to notice nothing's changed in my life with the government shutdown because it doesn't. No, you, you're absolutely right. I just don't think that Marjorie Taylor Greene has the only direct line to President Trump. She has. She may not have the. She may not have the only. She may not have the only, but she has the most direct and important. She's got like the red phone. Yeah. We'll, we'll respectfully disagree on. Really, who's close? Who in Congress do you think is personally closer to President Trump than Marjorie Taylor Greene? I believe Mike Johnson is. No, that's just because you're in Louisiana and you're, you know, you like the guy a lot. No, she, no, she's here. Like the, President Trump likes the guy a lot. He selected him to be on his lead. Ah, 
But Marjorie, Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene is President Trump's personal representative, basically. You saw this when she got the phone call during the speaker's vote that one time with the McCarthy votes. All right, well, okay. Appreciate the call. Thanks so much, Louisiana. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, we're hot in Louisiana today. We need to have some sponsors in Louisiana. Yeah, you know. Hey, think about this. Mike Johnson has his own problem. They just redistricted, redistricted his district. Oh, really? These weird-shaped diagonal districts from Shreveport to basically New Orleans, you know, and... And it's supposedly a Democratic district, so he may be on the way out anyway. You know, there was they did that to Dennis Hazard. He was speaker for a while. He's he ran into the legal troubles after, but uh, he lost re-election in the House while he was speaker. If I remember correctly, he was speaker after Newt. Remember Hazard? He was the speaker after Newt Gingrich, and he lost his seat when he was speaker. Right, and that's the thing. Now, as far as Mike Johnson, he, you're right. He should he should have shut down the government. He shouldn't have never, never made the deal. He should have shut down the government. Shut it down. Shut down the border. Or shut down the government. Is my mm -hmm. you, know, you know. So, and you're right. He, he not only does Trump have a direct with Marjorie Taylor Greene, but he's he's in good with her boyfriend. Yeah, Brian from Right Side Bra uh, Broadcasting. Brian Glenn from Right Side. Yeah. So yeah, there are only a few, a half, maybe a handful of people I trust in the house. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates are one of, them, or two of them, and neither I don't think neither one of them could be bought. There's there's other people I like, like Byron Donald, anything, but Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates, I, no matter what happens, I know they have our back. Right. Uh, yeah. Trust uh, they tried something with Lauren Boebert. Remember that whole thing about her being caught in that. Uh, in that uh, theater with the with the guy with the with with a date, yeah, making out making out with the guy at the theater, yeah, yeah. So they they're trying they're trying things with everybody on the Republican side to get these people to either get out the get them to quit Congress. Or you know, shutting down shutting down the see the entire house is up, right? So all these Republicans are up. Shutting down the government is so popular with Republican voters. Not only would we win re-elect, if we shut down the government today and vow that it would not reopen until after the November election, not only would we retake the House, which we're going to do anyway, we would take it with a larger majority. People, the people love the government shutdown. The only people that don't like the government shutdown are the donors and people that are getting bribes off of government funding like, you know, Biden and people like that. Right. Now, now one thing is, is Lauren Boebert is now going back to running for her own seat now, and they've got another guy that's, another Republican that's going to be basically a placeholder mm -hmm. selection yep. for Tim Buck. So yep. that, that's two seats that we can maybe, maybe keep here. Mm -hmm. And all the rest of these guys that are, that are thinking about Quinn, yep. they either think about kind of, you know, Kind of expelling these people from Congress. Yep, I agree. All right, Mike, I appreciate the call. Man, we are popular in Louisiana. All right, your calls on that are certainly welcome. There's a lot of other things I'm going to uh, cover today. I'm going to start getting into some other topics after the next break. But you're welcome to call in about this. I want to tell you, though, if you are in pain, that means you haven't taken my advice to go see Dr. Appleton and talk to him about his laser way pain treatment. I'm telling you guys, the laser way pain treatment works. It works. It's rid me of pain five times. Dr. Appleton is just amazing. The laser way pain treatment, it repairs the damage that is causing you the pain. The pain is a signal that there's something's broken and it needs to be fixed. And the laser way pain treatment with Dr. Appleton fixes it. That's why after my treatments, my pains have not returned. Oh man, if it wasn't for Dr. Appleton, I'd be like uh, hobbling around worse than Biden between my arthritis and my shoulder and my knee and all these problems I've had um, that I don't have anymore. It's, it's really taken years off of my life. Give them a call. You know, and remember, not only is uh, the laser wave pain treatment effective, it's 100% painless. There are no drugs, no downtime, and no surgery. 
954-973-0710. And remember, appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome, even on Saturdays, 954-973-0710. And online, appletoncairo.com. Give them a call and say bye-bye to your pain. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve K Show. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brian. I just want to say thank you for Dr. Appleton because I'm from Orlando. I took my mic. It took three hours to go down there. I took my 90 year old mom. My mom walked straighter than she ever walked in her life. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being such a willing vessel to talk about Dr. Appleton. That's amazing. So, so you heard me in Orlando talking about Dr. Yes. Appleton and drove to South Florida with your mother to yes. see him. Yes, my mom is awesome now. No more arthritis, no more pills, none of that. She's going back to New York. She sits on a train for 24 hours, and I'm telling you, no pain. She gets off that train, and my sister says she walks like a young woman. That's amazing. Thank you. Call Dr. Appleton and say bye-bye to your pain, too. 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. Online. Appleton. Why is everyone all upset about Benny Johnson? Did Benny Johnson do something Understand. that I missed? Oh, clickbait. Well, you know, he's got kids to support. Give him a break. Ah. How many kids does he have? Immature. Well, he's young. Three kids. Yeah, you're that age. You got three kids. You might be doing some clickbait too, to get some. You know, <laughs> three kids and a wife. I know how expensive it was to have one. something I wanted to play. All right, welcome back, one and all. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. I, did you see this story? I, this is just really sad. 15-year-old girl was gunned down by cops as she ran towards them for help after being kidnapped by her father all while a deputy begged for other officers to stop firing. New video has been released. I'm not going to play it for you. 15-year-old Savannah was killed in September 2022 after her father murdered her mother and then abducted her. And the video has just um, come public. It says here, uh, the tragic video of the shooting was released Monday after journalists requested it under the Public Records Act in California. It shows 15-year-old Savannah was following police instructions and does not prove as police had previously re uh, claimed that she was wearing tactical equipment when they shot her dead. They said when she got out of the car, she was kidnapped by her dad who killed her mother. The police caught up to them. They have them on the side of the road. The girl gets out and they shoot the 15-year-old girl dead. And I, and I watched the video this morning. It's got awful to watch. I watched it so I could talk about it. She's following police orders, even though she's the victim. She's crawling toward, and when, the, when this happened, they said she was wearing tactical gear. Uh, she, it doesn't look that way to me, and, and others agree, and um, she was complying. The footage shows the teen slowly moving towards officers. 
uh, as a deputy takes cover by the front wheel of a police SUV. Suddenly, gunfire erupts, and th they're on the side of the road, and it's like out in the desert. And you can see as they're shooting her, it's awful. You can see um, the, the, the bullets hit the side of the road because you see the dust and dirt and sand fly up. Um, suddenly, gunfire erupts, and the teen is blurred out as she is killed by cops. 15-year-old girl, stop shooting her. He's in the car. Stop. She's okay. He's in the car. Stop. The deputy pleads. It's, the whole family's dead. Um, when Tracy was killed, investigators issued an Amber Alert for the teen, quickly responded when a civilian spotted the uh, dad. But that, the, Tracy was the mother. So when the mother was killed, investigators issued an Am Amber Alert for the girl. Um and quickly responded when a civilian spotted the dad and daughter. Deputies from San Bernardino tried to pull the truck over just before 11 a.m. They were fired at by the father who had a semi-automatic weapon. Authorities followed the truck for about 70 miles as the father continued to fire at them. He tried and failed to take his vehicle up an embankment. He came to a stop on the side of the road, 80 miles from downtown Los Angeles. The newly released footage includes a camera from the Sheriff's Department helicopter, and it shows him attempting to go in reverse on the road as he continues to fire at officers. The 15-year-old girl, Savannah, can be seen getting out of the car as an officer says over the radio, the girl's out. The female juvie is out. She's out on the passenger side. She keeps a low crouch. They're describing, ex per this is perfect description of the video because I, I, as I say, I watched it. She keeps a low crouch but starts moving quickly towards the officers when suddenly a gunshot rings out and then they blur the footage of her bodies. The Sheriff's Department deputies were not wearing body cameras, but the audio was released from an officer near the girl as she was getting out. He repeatedly yells, passenger, get out, come here, come to me, come, 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 walk, walk, walk. Back over the radio after the 15-year-old was shot, an officer can be seen um, and heard saying, oh, no. Um, at the time of the shooting, it looked like she was running towards the deputies wearing tactical gear, says the San Bernardino County Sheriff's police spokesperson. But the footage shows, which is aerial, that the 15-year-old girl is clearly speeding up. She's moving in a crouch position, and it does not look as if she's wearing tactical gear. Um, this is awful. Okay, um, I mean, this is, it's manslaughter, I guess. Um, it's, it's just god-awful. You know, the, the, there's a lot of talk about this uh, diversity inclusion thing. You know, there's, there's a lot of problems with police in this country. Okay, a lot of problems. Um, it's not this diversity equity thing. It's old-fashioned affirmative action is a lot of it. I mean, look at those cops at that Uvalde shooting. Look at those idiots. How many little babies are dead because of those monsters? And one, remember the one reached out and uh, used the hand sanitizer on the wall? You know, police, I support the police, but let's, hey, come on. You know, it's government work. And the, the best of the best, especially in these liberal communities, whether it's uh, Minnesota or California, okay, you know, you've got liberal communities and, it, and government work attracts incompetent people. You know, um, I have uh, police and retired police officers in my family. And, um, you know, my, my grandfather's one I, you know, was closest with, and he was a police officer for 35 years. And he, he was in the military first. You know, too many police officers today, they don't have military experience. They, they just don't. They don't have the discipline or training. And they what do they do? They go to community college, and then all of a sudden they've got a badge or a gun. You know, this girl was, these, you know, whatever happened with George Floyd was, you know, should Derek Chauvin be in, Derek Chauvin could not get a fair trial. You know, um, I don't believe he killed him. I think that um, uh, George Floyd killed himself and with the drugs and everything. And what Derek Chauvin looked like he was trying to do to me was not cause a riot because it was out on the street. And Derek Chauvin, it looks to me in that video, which I'll never watch again. It's very disturbing. 
he knew that George Floyd was dead for a while, as did the paramedics when they arrived. They were afraid of having a street riot. But Derek Chauvin's in prison for how long? In that kangaroo court that they had? These cops that, that shot dead this 15-year-old girl, they should be locked up. That's, that's, that's manslaughter. And, and I'll tell you, they, they really need to do a look into the sheriff's department hiring practices and screening practices. You know, um, they used to have very strict physical requirements to be police officers, and they've relaxed the things so much, a lot of times these cops are just scared. You know, um, I remember during the Parkland shooting, people called in and said, you know, because the cop wouldn't go in and he pretended, you know, to look in windows and doors when he knew what was going on. And uh, some people would call in and say, well, would you have stormed into that building? I'm not a trained police officer. I'm a radio guy. I'm not trained to do that. I'd like to think I would if I, if I had my Glock with me or something. But that's not what I'm trained for. And that cop in Parkland, um, who looked so heavy, he probably hasn't seen his penis while he's urinated in years. You know, uh, he was just sitting there building up time. Never, you know, that was e that's an easy police job resource officer at that school. It used to be. And he was a, he's a coward. You trust police officers to do the right thing. And I think a lot of times police are just scared. And these guys uh, were scared and out of control. It's unfortunate. You know, back in the days when my grandfather was a police officer, they, they had uh, revolvers. My, my grandfather had one of those uh, police specials, which I think those were 38s, like those long barrel 38s. I'm, I'm not sure if it was a 38, but they had revolvers. And with, with semi-autos that they have now, like Glocks, they fire off rounds too fast, you know, with a... With a revolver, you've got to physically pull the trigger. It's heavier. The cylinder's got to move. With, with what they carry now, these 9 millimeters and everything, it's just, you know, so quick as well. But they, you know, I, I used to think, well, maybe they should go back to having revolvers, but they'd be so outmatched by what they're confronted with on the street that uh, the revolvers, I, they can't have revolvers. What they need are better trained people to be police officers. All right. That's what they need. And uh, these these police officers in this new video that's all over the news where they shot dead this unarmed 15 year old girl who was going to them for help. Her father murdered her mother and she's going through all this trauma and then they murdered her. I mean, they just shot her dead. It's outrageous. It's sick. You know, and uh, when I watched that video this morning, I, I didn't want to watch it, but I thought, you know what, I, I got to watch it to talk about it. it. It's beyond upsetting. And I know I'm not alone with that if you've seen the story. And I, I'm very open to hear your thoughts on uh, the screening of police officers and the training of police officers. You know, we've got enough people coming out of the military that have not just military training, you know, the the military's not trained to be policemen. They're trained to kill, but they're, they learn discipline, discipline and respect, you know, and that's just something I think we don't get enough of in um, police work in some of these liberal areas like California, uh, Minnesota, where Derek Chauvin was and such. All right, we're coming up on the top of the hour. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll take our break for the top of the hour. Come back. We'll get, uh, get into... Uh, back to the political news, but you're welcome to call in about anything I brought up so far on the program, the Matt Gates breaking revelation or this incident where the police in California killed this innocent 15-year-old child. Our number one, 888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. I'm Brian. We'll be right back after this. I'll get back to the politics after the break.
If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Let's see, where is, there's a bunch of stuff I want to get to today. I'm just not sure. I've got so much good material, I don't know which of these stories, because I don't have time to get through everything. He's never Trumpers. If you're on hold, stand by. I really don't like those April Fool jokes that people put up. I never do the April Fools thing. Um, I don't know what Benny Johnson did, but uh, James O'Keefe did one, and it was so obvious what it was, <laughs> you know. Um, I don't like the uh, April Fool's jokes that people do. Too much serious stuff for that. I remember Hannity years ago on April Fool's, he came on and said that he became a Democrat, did this long thing, and then said, April Fool's, I mean, you know, come on. Be back shortly. I agree, Mark. April Fools is for children. Millennials are they have a little bit of arrested development. They're not fully matured for their numerical age as we were. I like humor, I like jokes and comedy, but We'll be back in 35 seconds.
Steve Kane Show with Brian. All right, hour number two has begun. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Call us on old standby. You know, I, I'm listening to the news at the top of the hour. There's some uh, abortion, you know, things happening here in Florida. Supreme Court of Florida had a ruling. Abortion um, will be on the ballot, it looks like, in November here, which it should not be, which you know, maybe talk about that later, why it shouldn't be. Um, but they say, I, I heard them say at the top of the hour news, but I hear the media saying all over the country about this in Florida, right to choose, well, right, right to choose will be on the ballot, right to choose this, right to choose that. If, bo- if abortion is such a good thing, why don't they just say it? Why do they say right to choose? Why do they take the, the abortion out of the sentence if it's such a positive? The right to choose is the right to choose not to have sex with some guy and get pregnant. And I don't want to hear anything about rape or incest. That's one half of 1% of all these pregnancies. Okay, we're not back in the days of the cavemen here. All right, so what, what are they talking about here? I mean, it's, it's just nonsense. Okay, let's uh, go to the phones. one 465 2631 You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good, good morning. Hey, Richie the bus driver. What's up? I, I, I just listened to your discussion where you were talking about that poor girl that was killed, which was a tragic accident. Uh, you, you also had that sergeant, I believe, in Minnesota that shot the guy thinking she had the laser. That was a couple of years she went to. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I have to say this. I think you're totally wrong. And I'll tell you why. You can take the 3rd Marine Division, okay? And you can, you can pull them right out of training. And then you can put them into the police department and train them up. They still have to face a, a sickness that's in this country of the public in this country. The total disrespect for law. Mm. Where, where, where... Like the other day, you would have seen this in the 50s, people protesting Easter Sunday in, and disrupting the Christmas masses. None of those are, have, have you seen, have you seen the video that I'm talking about with the girl? Oh, you haven't seen a video. Well, oh, slow, no, no, you slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm here till nine, man, and I'm here all week. Uh, at least I think I am. Is Steve making any decision? Um, the thing about the, um, this thing in the desert with a 15-year-old girl. There are different types of incidents, all right, that are, if you're in a city and there's people around and things like this, this was out in a road in the middle of nowhere uh, in the desert. The vehicle that the monster father with the neck tattoo was in was not able to move. The girl was out of the vehicle. There was no one at risk. And you just had, you had... Who killed the father? The police, they killed the father and the girl who was running to them for help. Under the, um, By the way, one of the deputies had her under control. Walk, 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 walk towards me, walk towards me. And the other deputies shot her dead. But what I'm saying is you take these incidents like this and you say the police are, need more training. And I'm telling you that the public today, beating up police officers, the guy in Long Island just got walked up to the car and got blown away by a guy that was out. He was arrested 21 times. He did hardly any time in prison, and he had a weapon. In other words, you had you have gangs today. When I was a kid growing up, if a police officer said to you, get off the street, you didn't mouth off to him. You didn't say, hey, I got my rights, and, and all this other crap. That yeah. The public is the disease. And Listen, listen. You're talking. You're talking about different things. You, listen. You should. You should. You really should go and watch the video so you can have. Uh, and it, no, 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 no. You should watch the video so you have an educated opinion. This. I'm talking about you. I. What I am talking about is very specific to this incident. These were out out of control, out of control, trigger happy cops that probably like the Parkland cop is are cowards. But here's the deal. You expanded your, you, you pulled that incident, which they all should, all those cops should be accountable. But you, you expanded it to all police need training because, and you, and you did say that. And I'm trying to tell you that the public. See, you know, because, you know, you're, you're, you being a public bus driver, you know, for the county, you're, you're like a police officer without a gun, you're right? So you kind of, you, you kind of part of that thin blue government worker, you know, line. But, you know, the reality is, is that um, the, the, you're, you're right about the public, that they, you know, they, there's a lot of cop haters out there more than ever. They don't have respect for the police. But in the country, too many. 
<laughs> too many. Too many. There's a lot there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. You know what the reason is? The reason is we have a sick a sick people But that's but that I mean yeah. I mean there's there's like this this poor officer who was murdered by that Democrat um in 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 New York, you know, he put on his uh they, they what's the story? They he did, in the police report they asked him his profession. He says I kill people. I mean the guy was a, you know, a murderer. But there's, I, I'm, I'm very specifically talking about a couple of incidents. This one with the 15-year-old girl, the coward, the coward cop at Parkland. Okay, you know, there's, there's, yeah. I agree with this. But let me ask this question. I agree with this. I agree that they don't. But I think that there would be less trigger-happy cops. I'm not. You, you think by you? Let me, let me say this to you. You said because I was a, a public worker. It has nothing to do with that. I see with my own eyes. You can go on YouTube today and you can pull up. Yeah. That, make money on disrespecting police officers. Yes. Hey, you can't tell me. I mean, it's really. It's, it's crazy. No, no, it's crazy. I know there's a whole. Sh there's all. Yeah, I, I understand. But that this this girl was 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 was, was murdered by out of control, poorly trained, cowardly cops in uh, California. All right. All right, Richie. And they cut. That's correct because they know they're all right. Rich, appreciate the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Doug. Hey, Doug. You no, know, uh, I guess I'll lay in there a little bit. You know, like any profession, there's always some maniacs in there, doctors, cops that don't don't do what they're supposed to do. And unfortunately, that's just the way it always is going to be. People are, 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 people are insane and do things like these cops did to this poor girl and and the father and. and you can't stop it. There's always going to be a couple of bad apples. Always, the top. that's just the way it is. But I wanted to bring out what you said about Matt Gates. I think I told you this once before, maybe, but I'm not sure. Uh, I know somebody in Washington that puts on a brunch for for Congress uh, breakfast brunch. Yeah, is you can't believe how some of these uh, Congress people come in that you think hate each other and they're best buddies. And, and what goes on behind the closed doors is a whole other story. Oh yeah, it's it, it, it's it's like it's like uh, you know the professional wrestlers, right? Exactly. It's a similar thing. It, it, <clears throat> exactly, man. And, and, and they're bribing people, and they've got things all, <clears throat> all over them. Uh, it makes you wonder why anybody wants to run for Congress. You, know, you got to get into Congress. Mm -hmm. If you get in, then you have to be worried about. It. Absolutely. No, no, it's, it's, it's all, it, you know, they're, listen, a lot of them, they, they don't just end up in Congress, most of them. There's exceptions to everything, but a lot of them are in state government or their local county or city government. And then it, so they've already been introduced to the corruption. So they're part, you know, but it, yeah, it's what Matt Gates says is true. They bribe and blackmail people. I have a blackmail people, uh, uh, and then... I feel bad for uh, Matt Gates and uh, uh, Monty Kelly Green and uh, the other guys that are good guys. You know, they get into that Congress, they want to do things, and then they find out. That yeah, but what Matt Gates talked, but what Matt Gates talked about though was very specific. We now uh, this month will have a one seat majority in the House, and he says they're they're bribing and blackmailing members to get them to resign so the Democrats can take over the House again, and we we could have Hakeem Jeffries as Speaker of the House. Before November, and if they, if he's speaker for just a day, can you imagine what they'll pass? They got they'll have the House, the Senate, and the White House. They'll can you imagine what they'll pass. Where, uh, it, yeah. This is going to be. Uh, I, I hope that is not going to happen there because that does really, really. It, 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 there's no coming back from what they. Mm -hmm. un unbelievable, but you know, this, this is what it is. They're still screwing around. Trying to uh, impeach Biden. Or well, how much time you have to get? How many witnesses you have to have before you can say, "All right, let's get through the impeachment." They don't want to do it. Exactly. But that's a prime example. We've had the majority for how long now, right? Why have we not impeached Biden? I know they won't remove him in the Senate, but he should have been impeached several times for his crimes by now, and it hasn't happened because there's something they got something on this Mike Johnson. He's at, he's acting the way that he's running things is out of character. For him, which tells you some he's compromised somehow. Matt Gates started that. Matt Gates started. Now Matt Gates said, you know, he he he's not supporting removing him because we don't have the votes to get a new speaker, and he knows the Democrats will end up being speaker. 
So, you know, so we're in a bad spot. All right, Doug, take care. We'll take a break and be back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve Kane Show live on air now. 888-GO-KANE-1. This is the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Coleman is doing it again for true oldies listeners. Call 833-283-5050 and Coleman will give you... <clears throat> Welcome. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, okay? We'll be back shortly, guys. No, that rescue mom, you're right about that. That's what Matt Gates was talking about. But still, there's something wrong with that guy. I remember you guys that are Patreon supporters, I uploaded a uh, video for Patreon supporters on the Patreon page. Make sure you check that out. If you want to be uh, become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of the video to my Patreon page. Yeah, he could shut down the government, Mike Johnson, until they close the border. But he doesn't do it. Right? But he doesn't do it. <clears throat> okay, 10 seconds. <clears throat> All right, I'm Brian at Steve Kane Show. We're back. Mike Lindell is offering the biggest mattress topper sale ever. You know, I only get about four hours sleep a night. Uh, I'm just very busy. And if you follow me online, you see that between the radio show, my podcast, I'm live stream. You know, I did a live stream on YouTube this morning at like 3.30 this morning, right? You see me do those a lot, even during the week before I come in here, you know, do a little show before I leave the house. Uh, I get about four hours sleep a night, but those four hours I get are well-rested sleep because I'm on the MyPillow mattress topper. You can save up to 50% off the MyPillow mattress toppers and free shipping, okay, with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. They come in every mattress size. I've been sleeping on the mattress topper from MyPillow for years now. It will change your life. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. Yeah, you know, Mike Johnson, just to show how he's compromised, he could shut down the government until they sh shut down the, the, the open border. But he doesn't do it. Now, there's a big dust-up going on, of course, lately between Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. I'm not a fan of Ben Shapiro. While I do agree with Ben Shapiro 
on all his positions involving Israel. Um, I don't like him at all. I don't really enjoy him. He's been a never-Trumper uh, forever. Uh, even though he'll deny it, he still is a never-Trumper. Um, and this dust-up between him and Candace Owens is going to get real interesting. I uh, gave some, if you listen to my podcast from last night, I, I'm not going to go through this now, but uh, the day they fired Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring of The Daily Wire had a secret meeting with staff trashing Candace Owens, and uh, the details of it leaked out. I went through that on my podcast last night. It's pretty interesting stuff. And Candace Owens is threatening to do a one-on-one interview with Joe Rogan where she uh, tells the whole story. And she was trashing Trump last year, and I have not forgotten about that. But um, I'd, I'd certainly love to hear her tell all the inside scoop. But anyway, you know, I have a rule of thumb that I, I, I think is important. Never trust a never Trumper. Now, with that being said, there are people that are never Trumpers. They can be useful to us um, from time to time because they have a platform. They've got an audience. They've got influence. But never trust a never Trumper. And before I get to the Ben Shapiro thing, th- there was a uh, post put out by the Babylon Bee the other day. You know, Babylon Bee, for those of you who don't know, it's a political satire website. And they posted on Twitter, DeSantis kicked out of Republican Party for accomplishing too many things. And they think that's funny. Um, like President Trump, I supported DeSantis. We did. He was lying to us. But what really has he done? This new thing with Disney, I am so confused about this. The, the media are very unclear about it. You know, uh, is the King Charles thing still in effect with this new court ruling with Disney in Florida? I think it is. I can't really tell. But he really hasn't accomplished too much. If, if you know what he's accomplished, that's please call in and let me know. But we'll never trust Ronda. And when I say we, I'm not using the royal we like me. I'm talking about MAGA. The MAGA movement will never trust Ron DeSantis. He betrayed us. And he probably was against Trump the whole time and was pretending to get the governorship. As soon as he got reelected to a second term, he dropped us like that. So uh, the reason MAGA people have a problem with Ron DeSantis is he lied to President Trump and he lied to us who voted for him and supported him here in Florida. We can't trust the guy. Never trust a never Trumper. So Megyn Kelly interviewed Ben Shapiro. And I told you guys, you know, during the... um, primary, a lot of these conservative influencers dropped Trump and went to DeSantis, Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin, and others. And I talked about at the time, what's going to happen? You know, when, when Trump gets the nomination, what are these, what are these traitors going to do? And they're trying to come back and, and our good graces. Never trust a never Trumper. So let me just play a little bit here that Megyn Kelly interviewed Ben Shapiro yesterday, and she asked him about supporting DeSantis during the primary, but now he's supporting Trump. And listen to what uh, Ben Shapiro says here, and we'll talk about it. You were saying you would do that all along. You were saying, I'd rather have DeSantis, but I'll support Donald Trump if he wins it. So it shouldn't come as a... And I want to say this, too, one last thing about Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro lives here in Florida. Um, In fact, um, down the street from me, uh, literally, in a different development, though. I couldn't afford to live where he lives. But we live in the same neighborhood, Ben Shapiro and I. In fact, I, uh, well, I won't say, but, but, you know, there's all these Ben Shapiro sightings around town. But anyway, um, Ben Shapiro is another one of these uh, conservatives I tell you about from time to time, these, n- these never-Trumper uh, conservatives that have moved to Florida, uh, Ben Shapiro, Mark Levin, Dave Rubin. And they think that, and the way I always describe them is, they think they're Ponce de Leon, who's credited as discovering Florida on his search for the fountain of youth, which we have with Dr. Matez with his hormone replacement pellet therapy that you hear me talking about all the time. That's the fountain of youth. But uh, they come to Florida, and they're from these other places, and they think that Florida is this great state because of DeSantis. Florida has always been this way just a little less crowded than it is right now. But this has always been a great free state. 
like it is today. But they move here from California or Long Island, wherever they're from. I know Ben Shapiro was in、uh, Nashville right before he came here, but didn't he live in California before that? So these, these people that come from these blue states that are conservatives, and I, and I see this with people I know that moved to Florida from elsewhere, they're, they're like, it's so free here, it's so nice. It's always been this way. But they think it's this way because of Ron DeSantis.、Um, no, it's, it's not.、Um, in fact, I can't think of anything he's done to make us freer.、Uh, again, if you, if you know, let me know. But, so they have this Ponce de Leon DeSantis syndrome. They come here and they think they've discovered something that Ron DeSantis gave us. And, and that's just not the case. But anyway, this is、uh, Ben Shapiro with Megan Kelly. So it shouldn't come as a surprise, but it has come as a surprise to some. Explain that. Yeah, I'm not sure, again, why, why, as you say, why it's surprising that I voted for Donald Trump in 2020. The Republican primaries were over effectively after Iowa. And once President Trump had locked up the nomination, it was time to you know, get, on the, get on the bus because it's either Trump or it's Biden. Oh, it's either Trump or Biden. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. you know, this is one of those things like、um, I've seen these, these、um, t shirts and stuff in past elections. Where someone's voting for someone they don't like, and it's an image of, of a guy holding his nose while he's voting. You know what I'm talking about? So he's, he's, he's saying that, well, you know, he's holding his nose and voting for Trump. It's, it's either, well, he always sounds like he's holding his nose, but Ben Shapiro says, well, now it's, you know, I'd rather have DeSantis, but it's, it's either Trump or Biden, so tr- Trump's the best. You know, this guy, Ron DeSantis in the primary, first he was against support for Ukraine. One donor. Gave him some cash. He changed his whole position on Ukraine during the primary. That's who Ben Shapiro wants? Anyway, back to this. It's time to you know, get, on the, get on the bus because it's either Trump or it's Biden, and there are no other choices that are available. And so Donald Trump was a much better president than Joe Biden. It's that simple to me. You know, again, I've been very open in my criticisms of President Trump on, on character, on policy, and some of the things that. You know, by the way, Ben Shapiro thinks that Trump had sex with Stormy Daniels. Come on, give me a break. Bottom line is that from 2017 to 2019, he was an excellent president. The first three years of his presidency were great, and then the fourth year was blemished by obviously COVID.、Right? And then the. And then the so it, if I have a choice between 2019 and 2024, when the world is on fire, when, when Joe Biden is not in control of our border, when, George, when Joe Biden has facilitated the worst inflationary economy of the last 40 years, when Joe Biden has, has led to massive conflict in the Middle East, massive conflict、yeah. of the European continent. Like, I'm not sure why that's such a, a difficult choice. Oh, my goodness. So he's acting like it's a difficult choice to vote for Trump? Oh, my goodness. I mean, never trust a never Trumper. You never really know who they vote for on election day. You know who they say they voted for. It's a bunch of nonsense. You know, it, it just really burns me inside. You know, Candace Owens became an. She may get on the Trump train again now that she's free. <laughs> Of this, I don't know. All right, let's take our break for the bottom of the hour. Your thoughts on this are certainly welcome at 1 8 8 4 6 5 2 6 31. 8 8 4 6 5 2 6 31. It's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. Thank you, everyone. Censor of political speech, so that censors opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case 
the Federal Court of Appeals but now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me for 37 hours after he took care of office. He was censoring me. No president of the country has ever done that. And the greatest threat is democracy. It's not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give them access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS. These people are sick. Exhausted after work with no energy left in the tank to give your family? Are you having a midday crash on a daily basis? Women, are menopause symptoms like hot flashes, anxiety, and depression making your daily life feel far more difficult than it should? Men, do you feel like you're aging far beyond what you should? Is your sexual Blue Crow said 45 never changed, Ben did. Ben has been uh, consistently a never Trumper, regardless of what he says. He's with Trump when it's popular. If there's somebody else opposing Trump, he's always supporting them. All right. Oh, man, I just realized it's April 2nd. We're 25 days away from our cruise going to Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. I'm very excited. And, uh, you know, if you guys, we're not going to be on the radio live. We'll have best of shows that week. But uh, I will be live streaming on YouTube. I, You know, we've got the uh, Elon Musk Starlink Internet on the cruise ship. It works really, really well. And so if you guys follow me on YouTube, you'll be able to see me there. Uh, live streaming, and I'll do, be doing. I, since I have vowed not to uh, drink on this cruise, 
You know, I told my, I told my, well, I could drink O'Doul's. And my wife says only alcoholics drink O'Doul's. That's the non-alcoholic beer. So, there, you know, the reason I, I, um, I remember because on the last cruise, I, I, I drank way too much. Way too much. We, oh, my goodness. But um, at the end of the cruise, I told my daughter, I said, you know, I might have more fun if I don't partake in the adult beverages next time. And uh, I'm going to try to live up to that the best that I can. But it's hard when all the booze is free. I might sip some stuff, but I, I plan on drinking bottled water and uh, soda uh, for the most part. And maybe some non-alcoholic beers, but that's about it. All right, uh, but you'll be able to see uh, us out there on YouTube. So Brian Craig Show on the YouTube. You, can, you won't lose touch with us. All right, so, you know, the, it's amazing to me how much President Trump promoting during Holy Week that people buy the Bible, uh, how much this has just freaked people out. I mean, you know, it's, it's really amazing. And C-SPAN, notoriously liberal, if you've not seen my interview on C-SPAN, just Google Brian Craig on C-SPAN. They, they had me as a guest on C-SPAN, and um, I, did, I actually did the, I did the live, it was live, national, with live calls on C-SPAN from all these liberal jerks. And what they had is they had Podcasters Week. And I was on, it was a, I think it was a Thursday. I was either the third or fourth person they had. And they had some famous people on there. Um, and the other ones, they did like one segment. They kept me on for the long, longer than all of them. And they started taking calls right away. And of course, all the calls were from the Democrat line. And um, I filleted each and every one of those callers. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. it just Google Brian Craig C-SPAN uh, and it'll, it'll come up. But uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, I know. I'd love to do it again. It was so much fun last time. And, they, you know, they, they t the other podcasters they had on, some of them they took no calls and some of them they took like one call. And me, it was like call after call after call. And, you know, even when they went to the liberal line, I mean, the uh, independent line, it was a liberal. When they went to the Republican line, it was a never Trumper liberal. I, I don't mind. I'll do that all day. But anyway, C-SPAN, they, they were uh, on uh, yesterday's C-SPAN, they were taking callers and they get this call from this Democrat woman. And she's just flipped out about Trump. So let me, let's go through this. I love this stuff. These, these deranged Trump derangement syndrome sufferers. South Dakota, Democrat. Good morning. Thank you, Mimi. Uh, the hugest issue with our election this year is that we have an absolute criminal that's able to run. I, and by the way, she's not talking about Joe Biden who takes bribes and things like this. She, she, when she says criminal, she means President Trump, right? Office. I'm not clear how this is happening, but he has managed to have our Capitol attacked, which... I oh, really? That's interesting. President Trump had the Capitol attacked. President Trump was cleared by the FBI, and he was cleared by Liz Cheney's kangaroo committee. Does this woman have evidence that President Trump had the Capitol attacked? I, mi I miss that. If she has evidence, she should turn it over or sh at least share it on C-SPAN. To have our capital attacked, which I find to be the most disgusting thing that has happened in this country. You know, there's real hostages in Gaza and other parts of the world, and he's calling those monsters that went into our capital hostages. Well, yeah. You know, these J6ers that President Trump is going to pardon, many of them are still being held without trial three and a half years later. And in, and in America, you have a constitutional guarantee to a speedy trial, which has been denied them. So that makes them hostages. Absolutely. You know, all he does is promote violence, criminal acts. He's a When did he promote violence and criminal acts? I love how C-SPAN, you know, when I was on C-SPAN, they just didn't sit there and let me talk. They were coming after me. But this lady, she's trashing Trump. They get, like, turn the, 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 the channel over to her. He does this promote violence, criminal acts. He's a rapist. Well, wait, wait a minute. He's a rapist? Has President Trump been convicted of a rape somewhere that I missed? Have you guys seen this? Wait, wait, did I miss something? 
What court was President Trump brought up on rape charges in? I missed that. He, he has, has he been charged with rape? You know, this is the danger of getting your news and information from MSNBC and C-SPAN and CNN. This, if you are watching CNN, MSNBC, and C-SPAN, this is your reality. All right, this is what we mean by fake news. Criminal acts, he's a rapist. And now he wants to sell a Bible. How can such a violent man trying to destroy a country sell a Bible and add things to it? That's and add things to it. See, this, this just absolutely blows my mind. These people that talk about adding things to the Bible obviously do not own Bibles, okay? First of all, President Trump, it's not his Bible. Lee Greenwood has been promoting this Bible. But they're not adding to the Bible, okay? They're not adding to the Bible. They do have our founding documents inside the book, but they're not saying that the Constitution is part of the Bible. You know, any of you got a study Bible? I've got a study Bible. I've got a bunch of them, but I, the, the, this one I, my wife got me is really cool, the, the Charles Stanley study Bible. And if you ever had a study Bible, the actual pages inside Scripture have all kinds of things added underneath when they're explaining to you what you're reading. I've never heard someone accuse anyone who has a study Bible of adding to the Bible. Have you? No. I, I haven't, but, you know, don't let, don't let the, everything that's come out of this woman's mouth is 100% untrue. And add things to it. That's blasphemy. This whole thing is insane that he's able to be a candidate. The, the fact he's able to be, the reason that he's able to be a candidate is because he's been on the ballot in all these primary states and the voters in the primaries and some of these are crossover primaries where Democrats can vote. And, you know, every Democrat that voted, how do we know they all voted for Nikki Haley? Maybe some of them voted for President Trump because they're tired of these high gas prices and the grocery bills and the border being open. You know, a lot of Democrats may have voted for Trump because they're fed up with how Democrats are running this country. He's, he's not being allowed to run. The people of the country have chosen him to be the candidate of the Republican Party. All of these trials he has managed to manipulate he's just taken our system and made a mockery of it in general for america and our number one thing we need to fight for is to not have somebody that is morally bankrupt morally bankrupt you know joe biden was accused of sexual assault where he penetrated a woman that's right in the halls of the senate now maybe she against her will and she's so afraid for her life, she fled to Russia. Okay? So that's an assault, that's a rape, and that certainly is someone of low moral character, but it's not going to stop her from voting for him. Has no integrity at all running our country. It's just not able to happen. And what happens if it's not him? All of these followers, these violent tendencies, including... All the followers of MAGA that have violent tendencies. Let me tell you something. You know, um, Officer Dillard was killed by a Democrat. You know that girl that I was talking about an hour ago that was shot, the 15-year-old innocent child who was shot dead by police officers in San Bernardino, California? That girl was shot dead by Democrats. All these BLM riots that have burned down cities and done all these things? Democrats. Remember those people that... Uh, rioted and tore up South Central Los Angeles years ago? Democrats. What, what violent acts in, in, uh, is she referencing? You know, if you go and watch the, the, the January 6th footage, most everybody that went in there went in one door and out the other. Like a tour group. Some of them were forced in there by just the movement of the crowd. Some of them were shown the way in by Capitol Police officers. All right, we're gonna take our last break of the second hour. It's the Steve Kane Show. My name's Brian. Our number toll free, one 465 2631 I wanna tell you guys, Friendly Tire and Margate, all the tires on the cars of my family are on the road on tires from Friendly Tire and Margate. I've been a customer at Friendly Tire, I don't know, 15 years or so, many years before he was an advertiser here on the program. He has uh, thousands of great 
used tires in stock at incredibly low prices. Uh, and he also does tire repairs. But he has the lowest prices on new tires you'll find anywhere. Friendly Mike at Friendly Tire right now has new tires for as low as 65 bucks a tire. $65 a tire. And remember, that's out the door and on the road. Because uh, Friendly Mike at Friendly Tire doesn't charge you to balance the tire, mount the tire, or dispose of your old tires. Okay? So the price he quotes you over the phone is out the door and on the road. New tires for as low as $65 a tire. Give him a call. He'll give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. That's 954-977-9445. Make sure you tell him you heard about him on the radio. He'll take extra good care of you. We'll be right back. The cold. Welcome, everyone. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. After the show, go and look up my C-SPAN interview. That was the, I, I did that from the living room of my house. <clears throat> Steve's going to be on the cruise, DWD. We're both going to be on the cruise together. <clears throat> With Sarah from the chat. It's a working vacation. <clears throat> yes, yeah, Sarah went with us uh, when we went to the uh, Cayman Islands. All righty, we're back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. You know, I've started getting ready for the cruise by drinking water all day. Other than my coffee in the morning, I started this over the weekend, but I'm drinking only water throughout the day. So I'm getting used to being on the cruise. And I'm wearing Hawaiian shirts now, too. I'm getting used to the Hawaiian shirts. All right, so, um, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, what, what, what's DeSantis done? There's a new story today. It's in Breitbart. I'm sure it's being reported Elsewhere, hundreds of thousands of migrants, that's media speak for illegals, are being flown into Miami. Um, yeah, 
Hundreds of thousands of illegals have been authorized to fly into Miami, Florida. It's part of a parole pipeline that Biden's Department of Homeland Security has created, and they're now implementing it. Now, I got to tell you, um, Miami is so darn crowded. I, I got to go to Miami every couple of weeks. I dread it. I dread it. Man, it's, it's so crowded in Miami. And hundreds of thousands. Isn't this wonderful? Uh, and they're going to fly to other airports, too. The airports where illegals are flying into the U.S. Uh, were just exposed yesterday by the Center for Immigration Studies. It's the Advanced Travel Authorization Program from the Department of Homeland Security. You know, when 9-11 happened, the reason they formed the Department of Homeland Security after that, which was pretty important, you know, is it's a, not just a whole department, it's a, it's a cabinet post we didn't have before, is because the, we were attacked and there was no homeland defense. When 9-11 happened, it was complete chaos. Remember all that? And Homeland Security has become the opposite. As opposed to protecting the homeland, they just open up the gate, you know, like those cops did at the Capitol building and say, come on in. It's the Advanced Travel Authorization Program. It's uh, so far permitted 386,000 illegals to book flights to the U.S. And they're calling it humanitarian parole. You know, I saw a story today in New York. You know, they stopped giving out food to the illegals and they're giving them those debit cards and they interviewed an official in New York. I can't remember who it was at the May. I can't remember who it was. I read this story early this morning and they said the reason we're giving the, uh, the migrants, the illegals, uh, these debit cards that they reload every month as opposed to food is because they were throwing the food out. So since they're throwing the food out and not eating it, we're just giving them money. Have you ever heard of people that go to a food bank, get food, and then throw it out? It seems to me they don't need the money. They don't need the food either, or they wouldn't be throwing it out. If they were going hungry, if their children were doing without, they wouldn't be throwing out the food. And here's the problem with giving the um, illegals these debit cards. You know, anyone that has an iPhone or, you know, an Android phone, you can set it up in, 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 a, in 60 seconds to take debit card and credit card payments. All you need is a square. You know, these illegals can be buying drugs and guns with these government debit cards. All the, all the gun and drug dealers have to do is uh, set up some fake online food store. Maybe a Shopify store. You know, people sell food on Etsy. And, and places like that. So you could set up an Etsy store where you're selling food, but it's really, you know, fentanyl or cocaine or crack or something or weed, I don't know. And you could take, I bet you drug dealers do this in New York. They take debit cards for their Etsy shop or their Shopify store from these illegals and they're selling them drugs and guns. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens pretty easy to do. I can't think of anything dumber. They give, and, and, you know, so far as these food banks, you know, um, when, my, when my daughter was in middle school and high school, she would do some volunteering, sometimes Habitat for Humanity and food banks and everything, and I'd go with her because you don't want to leave your kids around, you know, homeless people and stuff. I, and I've, I've been to food banks, and there's one in my neighborhood. There's a church down the street from me. Every weekend, they have a food bank. And I've been to food banks years ago where sometimes they were just handing out sandwiches. Not very good ones either, like bologna and peanut butter. And I never saw someone throw them away. They were grateful to get the food. The food banks that I see in my neighborhood, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this church in my neighborhood, they, do, they have a food bank. And it's been there for years and years and years, and they, it's, it, they do this on Saturdays, and I drive by and see them do it. And I've noticed a big change in the people that are showing up at the food bank in the last year or so. They have nice cars. 
And, you know, I was talking last week about I went to the truck dealer and they're selling Dodges and Fords for over $100,000. I'm seeing expensive cars at the food bank getting food. And that tells me people are really struggling. There were stories recently that there's a major increase in, in families using credit cards to purchase food. And when people use credit cards for food, that's a sign of a lot of economic troubles at home, right? And when I see nice cars, I'm, I'm talking about expensive cars, at the food bank picking up the free groceries, I tell you how bad the economy is. They got the, it, they're working. You got to have a reliable vehicle to get to and from work. They, so they got a huge car payment. There's other things going on, but they, they need the help. And they're not giving them debit cards that they could use to buy gas or anything else they want. They're giving them grocery bags of food. And I imagine for these people, it's got to be very difficult because these are people that have never taken charity like that in their life. And it's probably embarrassing for a lot of them. To, they shouldn't be embarrassed, but it probably is uh, tough for them to go to the food banks. And these illegals in New York, they say, are throwing away the food. It takes a lot of nerve and it's really disgusting. And I know you've seen the stories. There's another facility that's for veterans where they're going to house illegals instead of veterans in New York, and uh, you're hearing these terrible stories of elderly veterans in their 80s and 90s that uh, they and their families are trying to get them in the facilities because they need help. Some of them have died being on waiting lists to get into veterans' homes, and they're, they're kicking out veterans, taking spaces that have been assigned for veterans and putting illegals in their place. And, you know, what we've had in the last three and a half years from the Democrats is Americans are not, it's not that we're not put first, Americans are not even put on the list of concern. They're always worrying about others. And, you know, these illegals in New York, there's a lot of local money that comes into this. They take over a veterans facility. A lot of people are getting paid. They got to have workers there. The facility has to be paid for. The city and companies that are contracted through the local governments make a lot of money off these illegals. Even uh, the, the local school districts, because the kids get enrolled in school, there's so many ways that there's, there's uh, financial government corruption in these places where illegals are coming to. And I got another question, too, about these over 300, almost 400,000 illegals that are flying around the country. Now, I remember in the olden days, you could fly, you never had to have ID. Remember that? People would have tickets that they didn't use and they would sell them in the newspaper classifieds and you could, I, I never bought them that way, but I had friends that did and they'd meet some guy at a subway and they'd buy two tickets to, you know, California for really cheap because the guy couldn't use them. And then after 9-11, there was all this enhanced security with identification. They're flying around 380,000 plus illegals on commercial airlines with all of us around the country. If they're undocumented, how are they getting on these planes? Right? How are they getting on these planes? I signed up for that clear thing so you can bypass the checkpoint, the security. And I've had to, I had to go through a, a Homeland Security background check for that to save time at the airport. Any of you ever do that? How are these people who have a com complete made-up identity when they, when they get whatever identification they have, how is it safe for them to be on airplanes? And you hear about all these Middle Eastern people that are uh, coming through the border and they can say they're Venezuelan and you're putting these, these people, some of them are saying they're terrorists, on airplanes? Sounds pretty stupid to me, but that's, that's the world we're in with Joe Biden. All right, two hours down, one to go. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show, our number toll free. 1 465 2631. 888 465 2631. We'll be back after our top of the hour break. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Paramount. All right. Can you hear me, Steve? Yes, I can. All right. Okay. Okay.
Oh, yeah. We'll be back in 15 seconds. The third hour has begun. You're listening to Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. Our number one, 888-465-2631. And joining us, Steve Kane. Hey, Steve. Oh, my. All right. A lot of craziness happening. You know, I, I just this story here, I, it's not one we would normally talk about because it's not in the United States. It's in Scotland. But a lot of times, this insanity, they start testing it out in Europe to see how it'll play. And then you find it over here. There's a guy, he's in prison for raping multiple women. And he's a scary guy. He's got neck tattoos. He's got a face tattoo. He's got tattoos on his head. And he's raped women. And it's getting rough for him in the women's prison. I mean, in the men's prison, right? He's raped women. He's in the prison, and it's tough for him. You know, the the rape uh, rapists don't do well in prison a lot because all the men you're in prison with have daughters and wives, and they don't like rapists. So he put on a wig, said he's a woman, and the, and they moved him to the women's prison. So this guy that's raped multiple women is now in a women's prison. I mean, it's just this this trans insanity, Steve. It's it's beyond it, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I uh, the disagreement you and I had yesterday was. We disagreed. I don't remember. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, I I don't I don't think that uh, I, I don't think that Biden really is. I mean, I, I think he's stupid, but I don't think he's this stupid. I don't think he had anything to do with the planning of this. He said yesterday he didn't. He claimed not to know anything about it. Yeah, I believe that. I, I think it's beyond his uh, his uh, level of creativity. I don't think he's even think of a lot of that, most of this. But how do they how they get it by Jill Biden? <clears throat> I don't think that they ran it by Jill. I think they're... So, so you think you think that Joe and Jill woke up on Easter Sunday, went out on the Easter egg roll, and it was a bunch of uh, guys in dresses, and they were shocked as we were. Uh, but no, but uh, the whole plan about uh, having a day of the week for uh, every year. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, transgender I, visibility day. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's just way beyond. But uh, I, you know, I disagree with that. Okay, I'll tell you where I disagree. I think Biden has severe cognitive issues, but I think he's not as far gone as he appears. I think sometimes he's medicated, sometimes he's not. And, and I think he uses the dementia as a shield from responsibility and criticism. Like, you know, like I, I wasn't going to play this clip, but I'll give you, you know, like yesterday, did you see when he tried to say Easter Bunny and he called them Oyster Bunnies? Yeah, um, let me, let me, I wasn't going to play it, but let me, let me pull it up, okay? This, this was, of course, on Sunday. Yeah, listen. God bless you all. Enjoy the day. And I'm coming down to do that Easter egg roll in just a minute. Thank you all so very, very much. 
Thanks, everybody. And by the way, say hello to Oyster Bunnies. Come on up, bunnies. Get yeah, come up, up, Oyster Bunnies. You know, he called them Oyster Bunnies. Oyster Bunnies. <laughs> So he obviously is a bit out of it there, but sometimes he's with it. And Jill is always with it. And, and the first ladies are like the social chairman of the White House. How do you have a transgender? I mean, I knew about it, so Jill had to know about it. So if Jill knows about it, that's the same as Biden knowing about it. I'm not so quick to excuse them. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't excuse it, but knowing about it and planning it are two different things. Yeah, well, who knows? Our number is one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Am I coming in okay? For now. Clear. Hey, good morning. How's the speed? I live. I Oh no, you're on the Bluetooth. Put your mouth closer to the speaker. It's probably on the ceiling of your car, right? No, I, uh, I'll, I'll see the that I just got. Uh, okay, that's better. That's better. I can hear you now. Um, I was introduced to a, uh, a pantry place where you go to, like, these food, these food line places. I was introduced to one in 2013 when I was, but I didn't have a, a job for a certain period. Back then, back then, you would get these beautiful food. I mean, fruits, pies, cakes. Bread, a gallon of milk, crate of eggs, a whole chicken, beef, the big beef, you know, the big long beef you see. Yeah. Twelve dollars. We used to get that, and you couldn't hardly carry it. Okay. And I, I'm now starting to go back to it because you know, I was working steady for a while, and now because of Bidenomics, I find myself going to this line because I know the quality of the food at this particular church versus going to Publix. And I know what the cost would be if I, if I purchased that same thing at Publix. You, you, you brought this to my attention, Brian, because you know, I have a background in, in uh, real estate. And some yeah. I have, a series, I have a Series 3 license. William Young will tell you what that is. And I also miss my... Well, hold on, hold, hold on, okay, hold, hold on a second. So, so you're going to a food bank now here in South Florida and they have, like, high-quality food? I've been been doing it on and off since I think 13 or 14. Okay, now now, now, let me just ask you. Are you doing it now because you don't have money for food or it's just to save money? To save money? Oh, my goodness. That's wrong. If you can afford food, if you can afford it, don't go to the food bank and take food that, that people need. That's awful. No, I need it as well. You, oh, no, no, no. I said, are you, do, I said to you, I asked you the question. I said, are you going to the food bank with the high quality food because you need to or to save money? And your first reaction was to save money. Because I, and, and you said, because I know how much this food would cost in Publix. Let me rephrase that as well. Like, I know that, I know that when I go there, I can, I can cook and eat for two days, okay? Versus, versus if going to Burger King and eating crappy food or, or KFC or what have you. No, no, but this is, but, but, but I just want to be clear here. I, I, I don't want to, if you, if, if you are destitute and you need to go to a food bank, I'm not going to give you a hard time because that's what they're for. But if you could afford to feed yourself, but you're going to the food bank to save money, you're taking food from hungry people. No, only only what I don't have money in my pocket on that particular. I don't, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it every week or every month. What I'm saying to you is, I have on, gone on and off when I needed it. But do, but do you need it? Do you need the help? Do you need the help now, or are you just saving money? I don't need it right now. Then why are, then why are you going? You shouldn't be doing that. But, you, but see, the thing is, I feed other people with, with that food. I, I, I actually am cooking for four, maybe four people, and these are homeless people. So I'm not just doing it for me. What, what, I, what I'm letting the audience know, because you brought it to my attention, by fancy cars now in the line, this is the reason why I'm calling in. And what I'm telling you is that um, there's this other uh, YouTube guy, and he's, he's into real estate and economics and, 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 and stuff and so forth. He has a channel. And he, when he was telling us that they were not leasing expensive cars like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, yeah. Maserati, when, when he say they were bringing those cars back to the showroom not, and, and, and trying to get out of the leases early and not and not getting okay. 
Yeah. All right. I, I, I just, okay. So do you want to tell anybody where this, where, where this food pantry is that has the great high quality food? Sure. If you want me to. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so I, I'm in Broward, and this is this is on Oakland Park Boulevard, just before you hit going east, just before you hit Federal Highway. On your left hand side, St. Mary's Church is the pink church on the left, and you made me call because the quality of the cars, fancy cars, people who you wouldn't think that would be are there. What in yeah. Thirteen. That's why I'm calling you, and what I'm saying is this other guy who's who was talking about the downgrade as of a year, year and a half ago. All right. Listen, we got to we got to run we got to run for the break, but I, I appreciate the call. I didn't did he not am I I'll throw this out to the audience. Okay? Cuz he he's talking about all these things. I don't understand what he's talking about. He said he's going to the food bank to save money, not because he's in need. And he tried to walk that back and started talking about other things. You don't go to food banks because you want to save money. I mean, I could go to the food bank and, and take food and save money. But it, it's for people that are truly in need. So if you're doing that, please don't. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Mm. We'll take a break and be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve King Show live on air now. 888-81. All right, and it's time to check in with Attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Attorney Barry Siegel, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you today, Mark? Great. What do you have for us this morning? Well, you know, we, when we talk about estate planning, you know, the first thing people think about is uh, who we're going to leave our assets to when, when we leave the, this earth. And that is certainly part of it, uh, naming your beneficiaries. But also there's uh, a very important component of it about planning for disability, planning for decision makers. If you become incapacitated and can't make your own decisions. There's uh, naming people in your power of attorney to make decisions that are more financial, business, or uh, legal related. And then there's also the uh, healthcare documents that are gonna allow you to name that person or persons who can step in and make decisions for you. If you can't make decisions yourself regarding your healthcare, those could either be non-life-threatening decisions or even life-threatening decisions. And uh, so it's very important to make sure that you have that right person in place to make those decisions, someone whose judgment you trust, someone that you uh, feel will be able to uh, make the right decisions and do whatever is necessary to get the information they need to make the right, uh, to make the right decisions. And really, that it, it consists of there's three key healthcare documents that people should have in their estate planning portfolio. The healthcare surrogate designation, which is the one that names the people that you would want to help make those decisions if you're not able to do so yourself. And then there's the living will, that's the one that is known as the pull the plug document that allows you to let your healthcare decision maker know what you would have wanted. Did you want to stay alive under the circumstance or did you want the plug pulled? It's the only reason that you'd be able to survive, according to your doctor's uh, judgment, is that you. Um, you know, by staying on that machine, you want to stay alive that way or, or have the plug pulled. And then the HIPAA, that's that privacy law and the, the papers we sign when we go to the doctors of the hospital regarding privacy. But in your estate planning, this document allows you to name the people who are allowed to know what's going on. So the doctors and nurses and other medical providers are allowed to share information with, including speaking with them, medical records. And really, it's a good idea to have people making decisions about your health care being allowed to know what's going on. So all of those things are important for people when they're planning their estate plan regarding uh, having the right people in place of mental incapacity. Yeah, and I and I know some situations in my own family where people have made sh they they they're remarried, right? They're on their second spouse or something, and they don't they don't want that second spouse to make the medical decisions because maybe they you know. For whatever reason, they want one of their children or a brother or a sister. They, things like that are very common, and people don't think about it. But remember that Terry Schiavo incident? He he uh, wanted to get married, then all of a sudden it was time to pull the plug. You know, you know. What I mean, you gotta. You know, these are important decisions. Now, it's always a no charge consultation with the Siegel Law Group. If you mention you heard Attorney Barry Siegel on the program, the number is toll free eight five five F L A thirty seven eighty two. 
855-FLA-3782. And online, SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, Attorney Barry Siegel, we'll talk later in the week. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome <laughs> back to the Steve Cage with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM. The Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM. Here is it on 95.3 FM. 96.9 FM. And the world that true all these FL... All right, we are back. I'm Brian Steve Keynes here. I, I may, if I misheard what that guy said, please let me know. But I think I heard him correctly that he's going to the food bank to save money. You know, I saw that at, when we had um, Hurricane Wilma, which hit us pretty hard, and they had a food bank at the Festival Flea Market. That's the place we did the appearance where they called the police on us. And they they were giving out all kinds of free stuff, and there was it was by our old studio, and there was like a mile long line of cars, and they were Lexus and Escalades and stuff lining up at the Festival Flea Market. I'm like, these people are just going there for the free stuff. Come on, it was, the hurricane wasn't that bad. All right, so um, a lot of things happening, and you know the the Biden regime is planning on sending an unknown number of Haitians to Florida, right? Because of this chaos in Haiti. I'm sure you've seen it, Steve. The chaos in Haiti. And you, you back with us, Steve? Ah, uh, well, yeah, because they don't want you to know about it. And, well, they're preparing to, with the Navy and, uh, and airlines and such, fly Haitians here. And you know, I got no problem with Haitians that are here, but Haiti is a is um, an anarchy. There, the, yeah, there was there they they haven't announced it, but uh, I saw a hearing about a week and a half, two weeks ago, where there was an army general talking about it, a lady general talking about it to uh, Congress. And just to let you know, there's a story um, today. Uh, this is right here in Florida, Pembroke Park, which is not too far from you. Pembroke Park's got to be close to Pembroke Pines, I'm assuming. Um, a Haitian migrant, which that typically means, I don't know, refugee illegal. Uh, a Haitian migrant was arrested by police Friday after he confessed to inappropriately touching a 10-year-old girl. Um, he's 37. He's been charged with sexual battery on a minor. Uh, battery on a child by throwing, tossing, because I don't get on all the other details of it, but he's molested a 10-year-old child. And I'm not saying that all Haitians are criminals. You know, we got a lot of Haitians in this audience, and many of the black MAGA callers we have on this program are Haitians, because Haitians that are here tend to be conservative, right? But Haiti is, Haiti has been in anarchy since basically the 80s and 90s, Right. Who was that dictator they had down there? Was it Papa Doc? Was he a, was he the leader of Haiti? Okay, since since he fled to France, probably with whatever money he stole. I don't know what happened to Papa Doc. It's been an anarchy, certainly since the earthquake over ten years ago. Okay, so the people that are living there have lived in a society that for at least a decade, but really much longer, their entire lives has been an anarchy. So, literally, and that's not an exaggeration, it's run by warlords and chieftains that drive around in pickup trucks, and you know what I mean? And so the people that are left behind for the last 10 years plus in Haiti have no experience living in a civilized society. So if you take, it, I, I mean, I hate to sound cruel, but it's true, you're taking uncivilized people almost like from the caveman era. You know what it's like, Steve? It's it's like the road warrior kind of people, right? It does look like you dropped in the middle of that war. Yeah, yeah, the road warrior, you know. And hey, let me ask a question. This, this is what I don't understand. I, and of course, I, you know, I have total faith 100% in everything Donald says. Uh, and he talks about, just like when he's back in control, he is going to, instantaneously <clears throat> deliver all these people back to their countries because we don't want them here. Yeah. And, okay, but how, how does, what does that look like? I mean, how do you, how do you, if, how do you restore millions of people? Oh, it's easy. Well, wait, let me just finish the question. How do you, how do you return them 
when their country doesn't want them back and they don't want to go back. Well, well, okay. First thing is because uh, the countries will want them back because President Trump is going to do what he did last time. He's going to call up the presidents of these third world Latin American banana republics and say, we're going to cut off all U.S. aid to your country. You know, that's the money they steal from, right? That's like their personal piggy bank unless you take back these people. So the countries in Latin America will change on a dime and take everybody back based on that. Okay. So that's easy. That's the easiest part. Sounds easy when you say it. Then you cut off all of this free crap they're giving them. Like, you know, it's so nice. Like, you know, uh, my daughter and her friend, are, they're going on the cruise with us, which, by the way, is 25 days away until we set sail. And, and um, my daughter, you know, and her friend, they're flying here. So I was talking to her yesterday. Did you get your airline ticket? She's like, no, I, you know, since she's in Southern California, maybe she should just uh, go down to Mexico, jump the border with her friend, and Biden will fly her to Florida for free. You know, I mean, there's, we got we to gotta buy her ticket. But if you're an illegal, Biden says, where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to Honolulu. I want to go to Miami. Okay, they fly you to Honolulu or Miami. They're literally doing that. So you, you cut off all this free crap, including the EBT cards and all this stuff from the federal government. A lot, then a lot, and, uh, when, and, and uh, cut the free housing as much as possible. And a lot of them will self-deport. When they, when they can't uh, travel, when they can't uh, be retired, a lot of them will self-deport. I give you an example. I was talking about these debit cards they're giving them in New York, right? They're giving them debit cards. You know, those debit cards, you could call, you can send that money on that debit card to your family back in Venezuela or Honduras uh, with the way the internet works today. You cut all that stuff off and a lot of them will self-deport. Not, not, not all of them, not, not the majority of them, but a lot of them will self-deport. So that, that, that's, that's phase two. And then you just start rounding them up and putting them on buses and driving them back to Mexico and dropping them off on the other side of the wall that Trump will finish right quick, too. The wall's going to be his number one priority. I mean, that's, it's going to get done quick. And he knows about building stuff. And he's not going to listen to all this BS of... Uh, I'm not worried about building the wall as I am of turning the people. It's, it's going to be difficult. It's, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy so easy when he says it and we're so used to Donald's magical powers. Oh, and you know what the you know what the TV's going to be doing? They're going to show children ripped from the arms of their parents because they were born here and the parents are undocumented. It's going to be they're going to try to make it look like uh the Jews going off to Auschwitz is what they're going to try to make it look like. And there's going to be sympathetic things, so you know, just don't watch it. This with the new group as it Yeah. You start to arrive. What do they do by the which group? The Haitians? None of the Haitians. The latest people coming up from South America. Uh, every every uh, every second of every day, Steve. No, but there's a major. Oh, there's another caravan. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, well, there's there's a nonstop caravan. You know, yeah. Well, listen, we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour, and when we get back, we'll take some calls. Our number, one 465 2631 It's a toll-free call no matter where you're calling from. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll get to the calls after the break. We got some other things to touch on that we um, haven't gotten to yet as well. All right, I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. You're listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. We'll be right back. I'll be right back, guys.
Did I misunderstand that guy? Or did he say he was going to the food bank to save money? I thought I heard him perfectly. My iPad went dead before the show was over. Luckily, I have my laptop. I'd be in trouble. All right, we are back. I'm Brian, Steve Kane, back here with us, our number one, 888-465-2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air once, twice. All right. Oh, yes, you just made it. The button was halfway pushed. Okay. Oh. Anyway, talking, talking about the Haitians, I mean, is there not anything... Um, DeSantis can do to combat that? Uh, he can probably fly some of them somewhere, but there's going to be too many coming. They're going to be shiploads. They're going to be shiploads. And and uh, remember what they did in Puerto Rico They with the cruise ships? They'll bring in cruise ships, naval vessels, everything else. Well, when, when you say they tend to be conservative, I, I have not run into that. I go to a, um, a church that was taken over by Haitians. Mm. And there's a lot of interactions. What, 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 what do you mean? You, what do you mean? You go to a church that was taken over by Haitians? What does that mean? It used to be well, the, the Haitian. Um, I go to a Catholic church, and the, the Haitian um, 
uh, it was, came in with a Haitian pastor. Oh. Uh, so, so a lot of the white people left. You know, I have continued to go. To well, okay, I'll tell you. Okay, like it, I go to three different Catholic churches. Okay, and one of them, the one closest to my house, they got a new they got a new priest who has an accent that's too heavy for me to understand. So we don't go there anymore. It's not, you know, so I, that, that, ha like, and it's so, and I, and I've been to mass where there's been like a, a Caribbean, I don't know what country, priest once or twice, and I can understand like every third word. So I don't want people to think people may have left those churches because the priest is black. You can't understand the homily. No, 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 no. Yeah. I hard to understand them. And, and yes. But anyway, I've, um, and I have a lot of dealings with interactions with Haitian people, but, um, well, we, we, have, we have different interactions because when, when you hear black conservatives call the show, sometimes most of them are Haitian. Some Jamaican, but mostly Haitian. And uh, I guess it just depends on the area. But my, my experience has been most Haitians that I've known personally tend to be conservative. But, may, yeah. The ones I, I've run into are Democrats. I tried to get talk to them about Trump, and um, oh. I said, I'll take you to the voting. Let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, they continue to uh, vote for... Well, you know, you know what, what happens is they, they get their minds brainwashed by liberal American blacks who convince them of all these things, I guess, maybe. I'm not sure, but anyway, that's... Uh, the mm -hmm. All right. It is. It is. Appreciate the call. Thanks so much. I, I pulled this clip up, Steve. I wanted that you were talking about the deportations. This is President Trump in a in a recent interview. And sir, under a second Trump administration, would there be mass deportations of these people? Have no choice. Have no choice. <clears throat> this is one of those occasions. And sir, under a second Trump administration, would there be mass deportations of these people? Have no choice. I mean, he doesn't even think about it. So, yeah, no choice. Is one thing, uh, I'd like to get a little more detail in terms of the how. These, you got a million people headed this way. We'll find out how when it's, when it's time. You know, he doesn't like to... No, no, no. When he becomes president-elect, I'm sure they're already doing preliminary planning. When he becomes president-elect, they'll plan it. They're not going to... They're not going to let people know in advance because <coughs> they'll find ways to evade it. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. It might be good to in start investing in the uh, charter bus business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <clears> Hi. <throat> Steve from Chicago. Hey, Chicago. What's up? Hi. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. He's got to. He's got to clean this place out. Of these. Uh, that we talk about. I just wanted to mention to you that you have a really nice shirt. All your, all your button-down shirts are really good. Um, I, I busted out the Hawaiian shirts because the cruise is coming up. I got to get used to wearing Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> well, I, I like all your button-down shirts. And oh, thank you. It was a guy that called and said, uh, you know, yeah, you look me shirt and everything like that. It, uh, I'll forget about it. Just, I always liked your shirts. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I love men complimenting my fashion. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I said, should I call to say that? I mean, it's not a Friday. Oh. I was wondering the same thing. Is there anything? I mean, we've been on the air for two hours and thirty-eight minutes this morning, and there's nothing. Nothing more interesting has come up other than my beautiful shirt? Well, I wasn't really watching her. Oh, you weren't listening? Okay. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll take the compliment. I'll take it. <laughs> it's, you know, listen, we only have open phones on Friday, but since we take the call screenless, it's, it, you know, you never know what's coming. Um, James Carville, who you see a lot of lately, uh, he was, he was uh, on TV yesterday. Listen to this. I love it. Yeah, I've been very vocal about this. Uh, it's, it's horrifying. Our numbers among younger voters, our, our vote, our vote, particularly you know, uh, black, younger blacks, younger Latinos, or whatever, but whatever younger, I don't know, like younger people of color, particularly males. 
we're not shedding them. They're, they're leaving in the droves. Yeah. So that James Carville, he for those that don't remember him, he's a, was a the, in the '90s. He was Bill Clinton's campaign guy. You know, when he, in his first election, senior advisor to Clinton, and he's considered one of the more, more prominent campaign people in the Democrat Party. Well, it's it, he said he said there he he said that when it comes to young voters of color, blacks, Hispanics, and young that they're losing them in droves in the Democrat Party. They're not shedding them, they're losing them in droves. And that's happening for a number of reasons. Yeah, oh yeah, that's awesome. Um, one of the reasons is, is um, Hispanics and blacks are pissed off at the open border. You know, a lot of, not, not everyone who's Hispanic is any more of an immigrant than we are, right? They've been, their, their families have been here for decades or centuries like ours have and, you know. Uh, and and those who are immigrants did it. It takes a lot of hoops to go through to become an immigrant, a, a citizen legally. They don't like these people jumping the lines. Blacks, and another reason blacks don't you know that are into the reparations don't like all these illegals coming over here getting all this free crap that we're talking like we were talking about today. But there's another reason, and this is the bigger reason why they're losing blacks and Hispanics and young people. We have finally reached like total equality in this country. Right. With the minorities, we've now reached a point where we have economic equality because prior to the civil rights movement, many blacks were in, in large numbers impoverished for, you know, all that Democrat Jim Crow and stuff. And here we are half a century later. And when people become middle class or above, they get tired of supporting a bunch of freeloaders. And it's the natural progression of someone when they become financially successful to become a conservative. And that's what's happening. And these old these old groups that Democrats have taken for granted, gays, Hispanics, blacks, and the youth vote, they've lost. True, that's reason for celebration. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why they're trying to replace Americans with peasants from South America. <laughs> you know, this is the, or, and, and that's why we're seeing so many millions of Muslims in the country. You know, so they're, 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 the Democrats have been doing outreach to them, but because they, 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 even the Democrats' mild support of Israel is enough to turn those people against them, so they're losing that too. The Democrat Party, what's happened to them are many things, but what's really happened to them is, for the first time, they're feeling it. They've lost touch with the pulse of the American people. The Democrats, since, since Kennedy in 1960, have always kept this, illusion, well, there was a lot of reality in it, that they were the hipster party of, of young people and minorities, and they've lost that. And they're not going to get it back. And, and, you, you see, and, and it's, it's because of Trump, it's because of Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens and a lot of these other people, but it's, it's true. And they well for the election. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Country of true. But, the, you know, the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to win, and we're going to win big. But, you know, like today you'll see in the news that the Florida Supreme Court, they've ruled in favor of the abortion restrictions in Florida that we've brought in since Roe v. Wade was overturned. And it looks like, um, I don't think this part has quite been settled. I think it's 15 weeks. They're going to have abortion on the ballot probably in November here in Florida, the 15-week abortion ban. That's bad news, okay? You don't want abortion on the ballot. The, the people that are putting abortion on the ba ballot in Florida are never Trumper Bush Republicans like Jeb Bush and his cronies, okay, that run Tallahassee, and Democrats. Because if they get abortion on the ballot, no matter what the vote is on, they think it'll encourage. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, they are right. It won't be enough. Florida is still going to go to Trump, okay? This isn't, but, but it could hurt us in House races. Level. If, you, if you look at the problem on a national level, I think it's a conceivable problem for us. Yeah, you don't want abortion on the ballots in November. And, yeah. We're going to be able to control that. I mean, well, we should. We, we should because we're, you know, this is a strong Republican state, but the Republicans that run the state government are Bush Republicans, you know, DeSantis and Tallahassee. They should do everything they can do to keep abortion off the ballot because that brings more Democrats to the polls in an election season where they're really discouraged, right? 
You know, and you you know, it's like a lot of times in the past they don't do this so much anymore because it's been accomplished. But Democrats used to like to go around and put legalization of marijuana on the ballots all the time in tough races and in, yeah, and they and they would use that to turn out stoners, and that would help Democrats, right? Because stoners vote Democrat. Now that marijuana is legal pretty much everywhere, they don't do that. They're doing it with abortion this time around. So we do not want abortion on the ballot in November. It is bad, bad news. And any Republican that is supporting abortion on the ballot this time is either stupid or they're working against Trump. And most of them are probably just working against Trump. All right, we'll take our last break of the day and be back. A cold. All right, and it's time to check in with William Youngerman from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated with the Morning Gold and Precious Metals Report. William Youngerman, how are the metals looking today? Uh, the metals continue to look great, uh, Brian. The, the market is just uh, still moving uh, in very strong support. Any kind of pullbacks we're seeing that brought up real quick. Like yesterday, we saw gold trade in a range of 2227 all the way up to $2,266, closing up today. <coughs> Eighteen dollars and ten cents at twenty-two fifty-one ten. Silver up eleven cents, closing at twenty-five dollars and five cents the ounce. <coughs> Platinum gaining five dollars at nine hundred, or losing five dollars at nine hundred and three dollars, and palladium was down ten dollars at nine eighty-eight. <coughs> Some more action so far this morning as we see gold trading overnight in a range of twenty-two hundred and fifty dollars, all the way up to a new high of twenty-two sixty-seven. And uh, right now, up two dollars and ninety cents at twenty-two dollars or twenty-two hundred and fifty-four dollars. Twenty-two hundred and fifty-four dollars on gold, silver up uh, fifty-five cents at twenty-five dollars and sixty cents the ounce. Platinum up twenty-two dollars at nine twenty-five, and palladium up twelve dollars at a thousand dollars an ounce. So the markets are doing very well. Any kind of pullbacks on the precious metals, you've got to take advantage of them. Yeah. Short-lived. The pullbacks are very short-lived. Yeah. So, you know, uh, with gold and silver, everything's hot right now, right? There's there's nothing in particular that people should be buying. Just get what you can. Yeah, you've got to round out your portfolio. Get You know, try to get uh, at least some uh, ma major portion of gold and silver and then throw in some platinum. Oh, really? You're talking about platinum right now? Yep. Oh, really? It's broke out and is, is solidly above $900 now and is acting like it wants to go higher. Well... I buy platinum on any kind of uh, pullback. I haven't heard you say buy platinum in a long time. That's exciting. So when, when people stop in or call and are looking to buy platinum, tell people what forms you have it in, what's available, what they should be buying. Yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, platinum in um, uh, platinum maple leaves from Canada, U.S. Uh, Eagles. Uh, the uh, platinum bars are very popular. And um, all these, whatever's the lowest premium is what you should do. And, and platinum, let me tell you, it's, it's beautiful. It, it really is. It's stunning pieces. Than gold and used in so many areas of industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, listen, William Youngerman opens up at 10 a.m. And, you know, I'm not the expert William Youngerman is, but when I hear you say, now's the time to pick up platinum, I can't remember the last time I heard you say that. that, that that's, some, uh, that's some advice you guys should take. You can give him a call, 1-800-327-5010. Uh, 1-800-327-5010. Online, 150 East, or I'm sorry, in person, 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road on the first floor of the Bank of America building. And if you miss the address of the phone number, just go to williamyoungerman.com. And at williamyoungerman.com, you can pick up both the phone number and the address. All right, William Youngman, will touch base tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I'm Brian Steve King. Yeah, just let me play, you know, so the, you know, the, the Florida Supreme Court is upholding the 15-week abortion ban, which means that abortion is going to be on the ballot here in Florida. I'm just going to play you two clips from MSNBC, and you can tell they're all, they're all jazzed up. This is uh, uh, Nicole Wallace on MSNBC. Major news on the reproductive health care front out of Florida. That state Supreme Court has just ruled that a ballot initiative legalizing abortion can go before voters in November, while also allowing the state's six-week near-total abortion ban to go into effect. 
that ballot initiative would prevent any laws banning abortion before fetal viability or, quote, when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. The measure must be approved by 60 percent of voters. The fight to get it passed is now all the more pressing since that state's six-week ban that goes into effect 30 days from now is one of the strictest in the country. Okay, so now you're going to hear this a lot. Florida has one of the strictest abortion bans in the ballot. It's going to be uh, in the country. It's going to be on the ballot. And you're going to start to see constant talk about this between now and November to try to get the, uh, the gay women and the women in general to go out and vote in Florida. And we're, it's not going to hurt Trump in Florida. This is, he's going to win Florida, but it could hurt us in some of the uh, congressional races. OK, in different districts. And that's that's what I'm concerned about. I'm not worried about Trump in Florida, but we, we're the uh, second or third most populated state. Right. So we got a lot of House members and um, we want everyone that's Republican we could possibly get. This is um, uh, what's that guy that's on TV? They found the dead intern girl intern in his office here in Florida when he was in Congress. Yeah, I, I knew the name, but I just wanted to get the the credibility um, descriptor out there. Yeah, this is uh, Joe Scarborough and his wife Mika about it. Well, in the short run, uh, bad news, obviously, for women's right. health, for women's reproductive right. rights, for women's choice. Women's reproductive rights. How many of you guys have been turned down for sex by a woman? I mean, you know, how many women have you wanted to have sex with that wouldn't give you the opportunity? Seems like women have all the reproductive freedom, as far as I'm concerned. It's, we men are the ones that are limited, but listen to this. Well, in the short run, uh, bad news, obviously, for women's right. health, for women's reproductive right. rights, for women's choice. Um, in the long run, uh, Molly, and you brought it up during the break, uh, both items by the Supreme Court were bad news for Donald Trump yesterday because first thing the court did was stick Trump with Ron DeSantis' six-week abortion ban. Will be extraordinarily unpopular. Let's see, he goes on, and I'm not going to. Can he wake up before he goes on the air? Um, you know, th this, but you could hear, even in his tired voice, there's, they see hope in Florida now, right? With this abortion thing that's going to be on the ballot. It's not going to be difficult. And, and let me tell you, um, the abortion restrictions around this country that have come in since Roe v. Wade, I think they're popular, not unpopular, um, because I don't see women protesting in the streets like you would have expected. If this was 15, 20 years ago, you would have. And it's because they got those pills they get at Walgreens or wherever they sell them now. Amazon, I don't know. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Dorso. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. You know, what? I saw that interview with uh, Carwell, who was one of the big brain trusts when uh, Clinton was the presidency in that. Uh, that, that was very telling. Not just what he said, but his body language in that. He looks like they think they are totally whipped uh, especially amongst the minority communities in that. And it's almost like he's trying to send a message to the current administration, you guys better wake up quick because uh, you're getting whipped across the board, which is great for us. I love seeing it. But I've never seen him so down. Well, you know, James, James Carville is smart. And, and, he's, and he, he may be a Democrat, but, you know, he's smart. And um, he, what he did in that was a warning to Democrats that things are bad for us. But the, but, but, the, but the party is being driven by these anti-Semitic, lunatic extremists, and there's no hope for the Democrat Party in its current form long term. It's a, it's a party that's on the way out. Just, uh, they're just a disgrace. But when I see a guy who's one of the big figureheads in the Democratic Party coming out with a reality check for them like that... A warning. Uh, you know, he's not the most likable guy, and then I don't view his politics at all, but... For a barometer where the Democratic Party is now, he's saying we're we're uh, we're we're in shambles, mm -hmm. shambles. You know, yeah, definitely, definitely running like a Putin campaign. And uh, actually, it was, it was nice to see. I mean, I'm glad we I'm glad we're taking it on the chin. But he he's a very bright guy, very into the Democratic politics, and he looks like he's already whipped. Yeah, and and what he is, he's a. Um... He's a, he's a campaign manager, but he's really an expert at strategy on winning elections. And he, he sees it as hopeless. When I saw Paul this morning, I, uh, just a quick view of it, I think it comes up by eight in Michigan now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, now he's pulling away at just the right time. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think it was very interesting to see that. And it was, uh, for me, it was very telling to see a guy like that from the, 
a blast from the past, a big Democratic guy saying, we're in bad shape. Oh, yeah. All right, take care. You're on, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, good morning. My name is Danielle. I'm from West Palm Beach. All right. West Palm Beach. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm actually an African-American female, and I wanted to um, tell you that even though it's against Trump, um, and a lot of people in my family were starting to change their mind, uh, and... The more that I see about Democrats, is I was actually independent the more leaning towards mm -hmm. Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost thinking and considering about voting for Trump. Well, that's awesome. What what it what is it about Trump that has you a life I, I'm assuming lifelong Democrat black woman here in Democrat Palm Beach County Democrat West What has you considering Trump for the for the first time? That's awesome news. Um. Well, I would discuss that about the, the like with um, a lot of things that the Democrats are doing. Like what? Um, I'm more of a conservative about the abortion. Mm. Uh, a lot what about of, this stuff over the weekend with the... Uh, with transgender Day at, at Easter. Yeah, How about that the transgender is, Day? Yeah, that really bothered me. <coughs> that, that's almost like my last straw right here. Wow. Um, I vote for um, Biden again for two reasons. I'm a nurse, and I know that he has dementia. And I knew it before he even, I mean, I knew it from the early beginning stages before he started off with it being very obvious. But, um, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. It's one of the things that I, I, I have a feeling, and I just want to bounce it off you. I think one of the things that has turned people in your situation off about the Democrats is that they're insulting your intelligence. They're getting up there and telling you everything's fine, there's no problem, and they're lying through their teeth, and you know it, and they know it. Do you think right. that's part of it? Well, I think, yeah, that, and also a lot of people just think that it's, um, because you're black, you're supposed to vote. Yeah. But, like I said, I was independent because I was smarter than that. I really like to the candidates. You know, whatever I chose that was someone that I would think was good, I would, you know, choose that person. But the Democrats is turning me off so bad because of everything, especially the transgender. And, and like I said, I have gays, gays in my family, and I love them all. But to impose trans days on, you know, Easter, no, there's no way. And I'm almost not even voting for any more Democrat Party in being. And Trump, I, the love hate with Trump that I have is that. I don't believe sometimes that Trump was such a decide to tell my son about that because of his past. He would get along with everyone, and I don't think a lot of black people knowing that they're listening if they don't know. Trump, from my understanding, was one of the first persons to allow black people into the club. Well, in fact, in fact, let me tell you, uh, when President Trump took over Mar-a-Lago and his golf club up there in Palm Beach, President Trump was it was his golf club was the first club to allow African Americans to become members in Palm Beach. Something about yeah, they don't know that. And yeah. Tell them, oh, and I don't believe he's that prejudiced. I just think that he goes to who's ever going to support him. And so I think though that the thing is with the party, with the Trump party, a lot of them are like some of them. I think I shouldn't say a lot. Some of them seem to be prejudiced, which yes. That, black people and if they if he didn't have a party like that then it wouldn't be so you know it, it just doesn't feel right but I, I want them to know that a lot like I said for and I love the fact that Trump was talking about the Bible the other day oh that was beautiful uh, and so like I said I might well, and I'll tell you, you know, Joe Biden, a couple things about Joe Biden. Do you know when segregation was ended in 1978, he went to President Carter and asked President Carter to allow private schools to continue to racially segregate and not allow African-Americans to attend private school if a school didn't want them. And uh, the three strikes you're all outlaw that, that puts, uh, has put, I don't know how many millions of African-Americans in, into prison for long prison terms for minor drug possession. Joe Biden was a supporter of that. So he's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's bad for blacks. And 
there's there's a lot of things that African Americans don't know about because the media don't want to tell you. Joe Biden is a racist and a segregationist. And Kamala Harris in the first debate said that he was a racist and segregationist. He you might want to tell your your friends. Do you know he gave the eulogy at the funeral of a Ku Klux Klanman, Robert Byrd? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, listen, we're out of time for today, uh, but welcome to the show, and uh, thanks for calling. Well, thank you. Take care. Awesome. Well, every day. We're, that's nice. You know, see, we shared some things with her that will spread around the black community. Call us on hold. Stand by. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., and if you're on hold, you'll be first in line tomorrow morning at 6. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane is here as well. This is Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. Beautiful call. What a great way to end the show. We'll see you tomorrow morning. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miracle. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And uh, everyone, like the video if you don't mind. And if you notice, with the lady, did you notice I didn't give her a hard time? I told you, when you got these Democrats that are voting for Trump, don't give them grief, right? Just give them some good information and thank them. All right, I got to run. Take care.